Now once the side that is flat dries, I are able to move to the door and you get the door prepped. Now this part of it, uh, I ended up drilling three quarter inch. Uh, I used a three eighths uh, drill bit for these two holes. And in the instructions, it mentions to have it three and nine sixteenths apart from the edge. Uh, oh, right here, it mentions three inches and nine sixteenths from the edge. Now, if you do that, you're going to be like right over into here in this area. So, I looked at the picture that shows this installed, and it actually showed it right into the center of this piece of wood, this wood slat. So, that would be a better idea on this door that has the glass inserts. Put it in the middle of the piece of wood, right in the center. And per the instructions, uh, it's a number 10 hole. Let's see. Yeah, number 10 hole. Uh, I did uh, 3 eighths of an inch. And you ended up just screwing this from the outside. You screw the bolt or from the, uh, from the inside going out. And then the cap goes on it. And then you have a washer on one side and a washer on the other side. And there's two different bolt sizes. I ended up using the shorter bolt for both of these. Now the longer bolt would have made this stick out too far. So that may work for larger doors or wider doors, but not for this door. And as far as the measurements, I went from the center of the door here I did two and a quarter inches because this is about four and a half inches across. And then I did one and nine sixteenths from the top. And then you do three inches and nine sixteenths from this hole. So one and nine sixteenths and then three and nine sixteenths. And then you're able to put your, your roller on. And so the same goes for the other side. Uh, 3 8 drill bit Put the bolt in from the other side the 1 and 9 sixteenths and then the 3 to 9 sixteenths So after you get the rollers on you'll want to measure your door and so you're going to put the track at the point of the height plus one and eleven sixteenths and you may or may not have your studs match up but you'll definitely want to put these lag screws into the studs if you if possible so what i think i'm going to end up doing is using this one by four and it's already painted white so I'm going to go ahead and use that and put that in where the track is going to be. And then the track will go over top of it. And so what I'll do, I'll center that one by four right where the one and one, the one and 11 sixteenths mark is. So I will put that up first and then I will attach the track to the one by four. Well, from the placement of the studs on the wall here, I can tell that I'm gonna to need to put that header board or that white board up here, that one by four, just across here. And then I will attach it. There is a stud right here at the corner. And then it goes right here. And then over to here. And then I made marks up at the top because I did put uh, boards across in here. So I will attach a few into this area. This line across here is the height of the door plus one and three quarters. So what I'll do, I'll take that one by four, I'll split it in half or I will split the 
the length of it or the width of it in half and then come down half that width and draw a line straight across and that'll be, that'll be the line that I put that 1x4 on. Now I've got the header up for the rail and I used about five three inch lag screws with washers. And so the next step is to put the rail up and because they offset, you won't have to worry about them hitting these other lag screws. So I'm gonna use this rail here and it goes three inches off the edge and I'm just going to put this to the edge of the wall and then this is about 22 inches so I did measure none of these screws are going to hit or line up uh, with the other screws I'm going to use a drill bit and drill six holes and it will go lag screw washer then the rail and these knob things and then this will go against that white 1x4 so it'll stick out or it'll stick in the wood or the yeah about that far so it'll go a little bit more than the one inch so just make sure that behind that wall you don't have any water lines or electrical lines uh, before you just drill right through your drywall and then one of the things the owner's manual doesn't mention, or the um, instruction manual, make sure you put your end stop against the wall if you're going to put something against the wall where you can't take it off, you know, without taking off everything. So make sure you put your end stop on your rail first before installing, and it'll make it a lot easier. So all you do is you'll slide this over to face this way, or is it facing that way? And that way your door will hit the bumper instead of hitting the wall. So make sure you put your end stop on your rail before you install your rail. It'll make it a lot easier. Unless, you know, you have free space to the left of your, uh, or to the right of your rail. Then it won't really matter that much. But it may matter because that last screw, that lag screw goes three inches from the end of the rail and your stop may be before that. So just keep that in mind also. What you may have to do is put both of these on first and then just line them up as you go. And that way, you know, as you're putting on your screws, you can push these around to your right position. I'm using a two foot level. I would recommend a four foot level. I just didn't bring it today. So just make sure your header is level before you put on your rail and then make sure your, your rail is level once you get that up. And a two foot or a four foot level would be perfect for that. My next step is to center the rail on the header. So I've got the rail up. I went ahead and put the stops on the left and the right. And on the left side, it was at the very end because I have about a 47 inch spot here and the door is 42. So I figured I could push it all the way to the back if I wanted to. And then on the right side, I've got it set at about right here. And this is where it'll cover, cover the opening. And I can adjust that if I want. There are two Allen screws at the very top of this. I don't know if I can show you. But they're right up top. And you can tighten those to set the stops. So after you get this done, and you get it in the right position, you can go ahead and lift your door, and then you want to have somebody help you. And then from there, you can set your stops. Now, once you get your door installed, you may have to take it down again just to make some adjustments. And that's what I ended up doing. I took the door down because when I was closing it, it was going back to open a little bit and it's because ever so slightly the um, it was angled a little bit to the left so that would make it open when it should have been going towards being all the way closed 
So what I ended up doing, I ended up drilling another hole for this last hole on the rail and it brought the angle down just enough to have it go to close once you get it, you know, almost all the way closed. So now it will stay closed when it's in that area. And then when it's all the way open, it will stay open. Now, if you had it rolling on you when it was all the way open, you would probably, you could do the same thing. You could move one of your screw holes down just a little bit near the end, or even two screw holes down for this rail. So you could make it just ever so slightly going like a upside down smiley face or a frowny face, but ever so slightly just to where when it's all the way open, it'll stay open. And then when it's closed, it'll stay closed. Just make sure you have enough gap at the bottom of your door so that you're able to do that. So it's not going to be hitting the ground uh, when it's all the way open or all the way closed. And so once you get it to where it opens and closes and stays open and, <laughs> and it stays open and closed, you can start on the rest of this. And what I'm putting in now is the anti jump blocks. And what they'll do, they'll keep, this is a heavy door, so we won't really have to worry about it. But these anti jump blocks just screw into the top of the door and they keep it from having it lift off of the track. So in case it accidentally gets bumped or hit, it won't come up and fall down or fall on somebody and get hurt. You know, somebody won't get hurt. So what I did, I just drilled a small hole up at the top, put the anti-jump block right in there, and then you just screw it in to the top of your door. And then you can move this around so that it faces the bottom of your rail. So ideally you want to go straight in with your door. So you may have to take it off the track just to drill, drill straight through or straight down into it. Uh, I went at a little bit of an angle, but it's not going to hurt anything because it's not touching the bottom of the rail. But yes, ideally you want to put that hole straight in. That way your anti-jump block will fit flush. So the next step is to put the floor guide in. And when you buy the door, it probably comes with some kind of cheap uh, floor guide, which is what this is. So this would just attach to your ground, uh, your flooring, whatever it might be. And then you'd have a cut in the center of the bottom of your door. And so you could put this in the center and then it would be guided, you know, through the door, but it would be, you would start it, you know, say like right here and attach it to your floor. But if you don't want to drill into tile or whatever your flooring might be, they have these wall guides that you can buy extra. And this is what the installation kit looks like or the install instructions. So you just need to drill um, a wrench, which is included. They include these little wrenches and all these pieces come with it. So you have this roller, this roller, and then two of these rollers. So this is actually a double door kit, or you could put two for one door if you really wanted to. But a lot of people, they'll like the clean look to it. So I'm just going to put one here and it's going to be, so when it's all the way open, it looks like this. And what you want to do, you want to measure what your space is up at the top. And I had about one and five eighths inch. And so I measured this and it's a little bit less than that. So really I could move this out some, but when it's hanging straight, yeah, when it's hanging straight down, you see how there's a little bit of a gap there. So I adjusted this wheel in a little bit just so that it's touching. And if you wanted to, you could actually move this out a little bit more because after time you may have some roll marks on your door here, but it'll keep it in line like as it's rolling.
or while it's opening and closing. And so the way I position this was where there's just a little bit showing over the edge when it's all the way open. And then when it's closed, there's just a little bit showing when it's all the way closed. So what you wanna do, you wanna drill, make a pilot hole into this and you can see the one the second one here there's two holes here so you just make two pilot holes and you go ahead and put these in and it recommends a quarter or an eighth of an inch drill bit to put these in to the wall or whatever surface you're trying to put these into so these are going to go into the baseboard and then to make this flush you may have to adjust this little screw outward and then Pull the bolt up, or the nut I should say. You may have to adjust the nut a little bit farther out. And then the bolt will come up. And what I could have done if I had more space, I could put this in front and then have this to the back. And that way they'd be right on the rollers. Uh, but there's not quite enough space to fit this into it unless I drill the hole you know in the very front of this which wouldn't wouldn't really work so that's why I decided just to use the one big roller and when you get ready to tighten it up it would just be this nut right here you can tighten up and then it'll tighten that little nut up at the bottom against the plate so you're probably saying well if it's open and closed and you can't get to the two screws, you know, do you take your door off? Well, what you can do, you can adjust your stops up at the top and just move your stops one way or the other, and that way you're able to get to the screws once you have your base plate for your floor guide lined up. And when you have them lined up, you can go ahead and drill some holes. And with this not all the way tightened, you could unscrew it and take it all the way out. That way, the just the nut at the bottom is what's in there. So this is what it looks like with this piece off. So your nut is down there. So then we can go ahead and drill holes into the wall here. And this is eighth of an inch drill bit. So we'll just drill two holes into the baseboard here. So once your holes are drilled, you can go ahead and put the screws in. So these screws are countersunk, so they won't be making marks in your door. And you'll just move your door back. Figure out what position you want this into. And then tighten it up. And you may need to hold the top bolt while you're tightening up the bottom nut here. And then you can move your stop back for your door so it lines up where you want it to line up. Once you get your floor guide installed, you'll just want to give it a try and make sure you're happy with it. Make sure your wheel spins if it hits it. This is another option on how to adjust your floor guide or another way to put your floor guide in. Now the gap here is about two inches and like I said it was about one and five eighths up at the top. So I don't think I really want to do this just because it's pushing it out a little bit more. I'd rather have it more close to the door or close to the wall but it is an option and this way it would keep the door from moving and hitting the plate right here now for this part this is going to be for your door handle and so what i'm looking at i'm looking at the inside of the door at the moment and so you want to 
I've already done this, but you want to put uh, not a measuring tape, but a level on the side of this bar here. And this is going to be in the inside. And so you, you could actually move it over a little bit more if you wanted to, but you just don't want to get too close to the glass and then you don't want to overlap the uh, wood on the edge there. Now I'm going to put the handle right here. And so you should have enough space to put your hand there and open it up when it's all the way closed. And it's pretty well centered too. You stick it right in there. Not quite centered, but enough to where you're going to have a handle on the other side that looks somewhat centered. So we'll go ahead and drill holes on this side through. And then these are your instructions. Not very informative, but these pieces should go on your outside handle like this. And then these bolts will go through the inside. And then you have these Allen keys to tighten it up. So for these holes, I used a 1964 drill bit, but you can use a 5 16. I just wanted it to be able to rotate in there and be a little bit tight. So I have to use the Allen key to tighten it up. And that way it'll be tight in the door. And make sure when you're doing this, make sure you get your plate to where the counter sink is facing towards you. That way these bolts will be countersunk and then once you get these just to pop out or pop out a little bit more you want to hold your other piece to it including these small little plates so you want to bring the handle over here with the plates and then start screwing these in now I ended up re-drilling these holes to 2164 just so they were a little bit oversized and that way I could get the handle on the other side to tighten just the way I wanted it. So now these are able to move a little bit and then you can tighten up and level your handle on both sides. So this is how it looks when it's all installed. You have your exterior handle, your washer or your plate that goes behind the handle and then to the inside and then to the inside you have the interior handle with the two screws or two bolts that go through and they're both countersunk. Now I did modify the door guide slide at the bottom. What I ended up doing was drilling and using a Dremel to move this valley or the the slide here back a little bit farther and that way these rollers would fit back more so because before the hole would go to maybe here and so this was pushed over about a half an inch or so so what I ended up doing was using the drill and drilling it out and then I used the Dremel at the bottom and that way that nut would slide back and forth and it would move back farther. So now the gap that's here is the same as what's up at the top. So it looks way better than what it did. So I did give it a little bit of play and I could take that out if I wanted to and that way it just really will slide on this. I wanted to give it a little separation, but you don't have to. But as far as placement, as long as it's gonna to be touching the door when it's open and then when it's closed, you could assume it's a pretty good placement. So the next thing to do is the baseboards. And what I'm going to do, I could do a scarf joint, I could do a 45 degree angle here and put an overlapping piece right like that on top of it. But with all these 
different uh, cuts here, I might want to just take the whole thing out. And so I'm thinking about doing that. But what I'll have to do, I'll have to cut down here at the bottom all the way across because what they did, they put this um, baseboard in before they put the tile down, which is normal. But the thing is, when I pull this out, you know, I have to, I'd have to dig all this out. So I think what I might do, I might just cut it out and then cut the new baseboard to that height. That way it all matches. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna cut this whole baseboard out. And that way I can just cut the angle here at the end. And then it's gonna be a butt joint right up. It's gonna butt up against the door frame here, casing. Or the trim, I should say. The door trim that goes around the door frame. So what I will do is use the multi-tool and cut down at the bottom here all the way across. And then I will pull this back and then I will replace it with a full piece that goes all the way to the end down here. And if there's any leftover brad nails, you could take those out. Then I'll just take a razor blade and cut the caulking off. This is the baseboards that I've gotten cut already. This one was a 22.5 angle. I had to recut this piece because the edge of it broke when I was trimming the edge over here. But uh, the new piece is going to fit in there perfectly. It's 22.5 degrees on both sides, one going in, the other one side going in. These are 22.5, and this side's 22.5. So now what I'm going to work on is doing a scarf joint on this side right here. So I'm going to cut that at a 45 uh, outward. And so the other piece will fit over it. And then I will have just one piece to cut and that'll be this piece right here. And so what I'm using, I'm using a miter saw and I'm using a table saw. So I'm using a table saw to cut a little bit off the bottom here so that way it fits on the tile. 
and then I'm using the miter saw for the 22.5 and then actually I use the table saw for the 22.5 on the small piece because the miter saw was a little bit uh, more difficult to work with you know just so your fingers don't get cut so for me the table saw was easier on that piece So that is my attempt at a 45 degree angle freehand, but I may need to use some sandpaper and smooth it out a little. Now, the only thing I can think that's going to cause an issue is when um, I drywalled over here, it looks like it may go over this edge. So I may have to trim a little bit off the back side of this just to make it fit right here. But that's one thing you can do, just trim a little bit off the back side of your baseboard and then it should line up to where this edge will line up with your other edge. Well, I cut my other piece of board here baseboard and it's not going to line up unless I can pull this side out or dig out a lot of this drywall which I don't really want to do so what I'm considering is you can see how it's pushed out a little bit on the new baseboard here I did pull it out from the top so it is matching up better up at the top here but I want it all to match up perfectly so what I probably end up doing is cutting along the bottom here and replacing this entire piece. Well, I got that chunk out and of course they brad nailed it right there in the corner. So now what I got to do is just make sure that this is all nice and level through here. And then as soon as I get it all level, I can put a new piece down and then make this 22.5 cut. So yeah, it's a little bit high, so I'm going to have to trim it down a little bit so I can wedge it under there. When I can get this piece out, all I need to do is just trim it a little bit and then I can push it back down in there. So what I'll do, I'll just trim this back edge and that way I can wedge it back in there. You can see how it's raised up in the back there. And let's see if this fits in. Go, that fits in nicely. Now it should be just a matter of measuring this angle here, and it should be 22.5. So I made a mark right there. I'll go ahead and cut that. This is how it looks after all the cuts are made. And so now would be the time to brad nail it. Uh, 
I would suggest maybe one and a half to two inch brad nails. Now the reason being is because this board is about a half an inch thick and then the drywall is half an inch. So you want to get into that two by four that's behind the baseboard and it's behind the drywall. I have some commercial grade super glue and some accelerator. So what you'll want to do if you want to use these is to make sure you have everything set the way you want it. And I'm going to do it before I brad nail anything. Now I guess it's up to you if you want to start brad nailing one section and then adhere one of the pieces and then keep going down the line. But I'm going to go ahead and do the adhesive before I brad nail anything. So I will cut the cap and that way the super glue can come out. Then I will spray the other side with the accelerator and then I'll stick the two together. And here's the cap. So you can choose how thick you want it to come out or how thin you want it to come out. I'm going to go right in the middle here for medium. I went ahead and super glued the one end. So I'll go ahead and spray some accelerator on this end. We'll just do one piece at a time. So that is stuck right now. So we'll continue with the next piece. And then I'll do the same thing. I will put some super glue on this end and then throw the accelerator on the other side. Now this is very quick setting with that accelerator, so you only have a few seconds, maybe 10, 5 to 10 seconds before it adheres. So I'll go ahead and spray this with the accelerator. For this side, I'm going to go ahead and brad nail this section right here just to make it fit a little bit tighter against that wall. And then it should make this corner fill in a little bit better too. Try to hold this as square as possible, that way the nail goes in straight. Now that it's pushed a little bit tighter against that wall, we'll be able to push this in here and really get that super glue to stick really well. Because I'm reusing this piece, so yeah, you want to make sure it's a smooth surface that you're attaching the other piece to. Okay, now we can 
Throw some accelerator on there. And then on the other side. Oh, this thing is dripping. All right, now hold the two pieces together. After all the pieces are set, you can go ahead and finish brad nailing everything. See this side, this top part pushes up or pushes around a little bit, so you want to put some brad nails in that also. And if you find any weak points that need more nails, just push along all the edges here and just make sure that it seems like they're all tight against the, the wall. I'm gonna fill in the brad nail holes with a little bit of putty for drywall. Now what this does, it'll fill it in real nicely. And then I can come back and paint over it afterwards, after it dries. And it'll provide a nice smooth finish. And then if you have any big gaps in your corners or your sides, you can go ahead and fill those up with putty. Uh, what I'm going to do at the top is fill that in with um, caulking. So I won't have to worry about, I'm not using putty on that. But I am going to put a little bit of putty in between these gaps here. When you sand it with some fine sandpaper, it'll it'll blend right in. Not really much is needed on this one, but I'm just going to put a little bit on there to blend it in a little better. And when it dries, you can just rub most of it off or use this fine sandpaper and just sand it.
Now the next thing you want to do is to cock your baseboards, the top of your baseboards. And I'm using something that uh, is 100% waterproof. It's got good flexibility, crack proof, and it matches the baseboard. So, and usually you'll want it something that you can paint on to or paint over. So you'll just go ahead and cock the top of this. And you'll want to use a lot of paper towels when you clean this up. Because this stuff gets pretty messy. So all you need to do is use your finger and that'll smear the caulking into the crack there. See, I'm just using the overage to fill the gap by the door. Because this is paintable, so I can go back over and paint it. Okay, so now this is what it looks like with the caulking all done. And so the next step after this would be to paint the baseboard. And I went ahead and got some paint that will match the old baseboard. And I'm going to come back probably tomorrow after this caulking dries and then tape it off. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the baseboard. And then one last thing. Now the gap between the tile and the new baseboard, there may be a big gap or opening there. So you may need to put some tile grout in there. Or they do have colored caulking so that is an option too like if the hole is pretty big you may want to put a little bit of grout in there if you have some extra grout or like I said they do make a grout caulking that you can squeeze out of a tube or if the gap is not that big like some of these areas here you can just use that silicone colored caulking and it'll match with the grout or just pick a color that will match your grout. Well, this is Mike from Mike's Do It Yourself. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck on your next home or automotive project. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment.